In this presentation, we further explore the idea of refraction, and specifically we define the relationship between the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction, and the indices of refraction in each of the different regions. So we learned earlier that when light is incident from one medium and enters a second medium, that the light tends to bend or refract. And we know that when light starts off in a region with a low index of refraction where it's traveling fast, that the angle in, of incidence will be larger than the angle of refraction. In other words, the light will bend towards the normal when it enters a region where the light has, is traveling slower and has a larger index of refraction. So it turns out that there is a relationship between the angle of incidence, I, the angle of refraction, R, and the indices of refraction in each of the different regions. And that relationship is Snell's, it's defined by Snell's law. And Snell's law states that if you multiply the index of refraction for the incident region times sine of the angle of the incident angle, it has to equal the index of refraction in the region of refraction times sine of the refracted angle. And so each one of these terms has been defined. And the using sine um, here should not scare anyone because really we're just going to use our calculator and we're going to just use the sine function in our calculator. So that's the extent of what we need to understand in terms of those trig functions. So let's see if we can check it out. Um, one of the things that's really important is that our calculator has to be set in degrees because if it's set in radians we're going to get incorrect values and it's going to become very frustrating. So make sure your calculator is set in degrees. One of the things that we saw in our previous presentation was that when we had light that started off in air and was incident at an angle of 60 degrees that the light bent into um, this other region at an angle of 40 degrees and we, we looked at this where this second region here was water. So let's see if we can apply Snell's law and check our results and see if they make sense. So light is incident from air at an angle of 60 degrees. When the light enters the water it bends to an angle of 40 degrees with respect to that normal line that we've drawn. We want to determine the index of refraction of water. So essentially we know what the index of refraction of water is but we're going to check to see if it makes sense according to what we know. So let's write down everything that we know that's given. So we know that in region one, the light is traveling in air, and we know the index of refraction of air is one. We know that the angle of incidence is 60 degrees. We know the angle of refraction is 40 degrees, because that's where it bends. And we want to determine the index of refraction of region two. I should have had that over here, which I didn't. So we can plug into Snell's law. Snell's law says that if I take the index of refraction in region one, which is one, and I multiply by sine of the angle of incidence, which is 60 degrees, that has to equal the index of refraction of region two, which is what I want to find, times sine of the angle of refraction. In this case, it's 40 degrees. So I can plug into my calculator, and if I plug in sine of 60 degrees to my calculator, I get 0.8660. And if I plug in sine of 40, I get 0.6428. In this particular case, when you're solving problems, it's a good idea to keep quite a few digits in your, in your answers. If you round too much, you might get incorrect results. So here I've kept four digits after the decimal. I probably could have kept three and it would be fine. So I want to solve for the index of refraction of this region where the light happened to bend. And so uh, if I were to divide both sides of this expression here by 0.6428, I would have 1 times 0 0.8660. I divide by 0.648. When I plug that in my calculator, 1 times 0 0.8660 is just the same number. So I would divide by 0.6428, and I get 1.35. So I know that the index of refraction of water is about 1.33. So it's getting a number that's very close to what I would expect. Now, you know, trying to read this protractor and, and get the values exactly correct is very difficult. So those angles, you know, might not be exactly 60 or exactly 40, but it gives us something that's very close to what we expect. All right, let's just do this one more time. Let's look at another medium. So over here now, we've changed the medium. So light is traveling in air, and it strikes a surface at 40 degrees. So here's our 40 degrees. 
And as a result, the light that slows down as it enters the medium and the angle of refraction down here is now 25 degrees. And we want to determine the unknown index of refraction in our medium. So we know that light starts off in air, so the index of refraction is 1. We know the angle of incidence up here is 40 degrees. And we know that it bends in the other region at an angle of 25 degrees. And our goal is to figure out this index of refraction of this unknown material down below. So I can plug in my region 1 index of refraction is 1 times sine of the angle of incidence, which is 40. And that has to equal the index of refraction in region 2 times sine of the refracted angle, which is 25 degrees. When I put in sine of 40 in my calculator, I get 0.6428. When I put in sine of 25, I get 0.4226. And I can solve for the index of refraction by dividing both sides by 0.4226. And I end up getting 1.52. So this region down here appears to be some type of glass because the index of refraction of glass ranges from about 1.48 to about 1.6 something. So refraction can actually cause a lot of optical illusions. And so I just pulled some pictures that I found on the internet that sort of referred to refraction. So I, this one is kind of a scary one, but it looks like the person's head is actually not on their body. And that is really just strictly an optical illusion. The person is inside of a tank of water. And because of the way that the light bends, it appears as if their head is located at one location and their body is at another. So the light up in air here for the person doesn't bend at all, but it does bend below the surface, and so we see that as being um, sort of an optical illusion. Here's another example of a, an object that's floating in the water, and we can see that it appears to be a um, different size. And then a simple example that we could do at home is to take a spoon and put it in a container of water and it looks like the spoon has been um, cut and that's again an optical illusion so the light doesn't bend as it travels through the air but when it travels through the water and reaches our eyes it does bend and so we can see that um, that the light has has made it seem as though there is a difference between the top of the spoon and the bottom so those are all re caused by refraction and the bending of light as it travels through mediums Another optical illusion, this is kind of, I know this is kind of disturbing over here, but you can kind of see that there is this optical illusion where um, the, there can be a change in the direction of those arrows because of the fact that the water is added to that, and that's sort of related to some extent um, to something called like a lens, which we'll talk about later. But that's another example of an optical illusion. But one of the things that we may or may not be familiar with with refraction is the fact that objects that are under the water actually appear closer to the surface and that's because of refraction. So here's a picture of a fish. This is the actual location of the fish. And so light, light is under the water in this case and that's the reason we can actually see the fish. And so when the light leaves the fish, it hits the surface. And so when it hits the surface of the water, it bends. And because it's the light is traveling slower in the water and faster in the air, it bends away from the normal so that the angle is bigger. So if I drew normals to the surface here, the angle of incidence in the water is smaller than the angle of refraction. And the light tends to bend away from that normal. Now remember the eye believes that light travels in a straight line. So if the eye follows those rays of light back to where they would converge, the eye sees the fish as being higher up in the water than it actually is. So this is another example of an optical illusion. If you're someone who swims a lot in a swimming pool, you may have experienced this. Uh, I have a swimming pool at home and we throw golf balls in the swimming pool and then we try to get them. So if a, if a golf ball is sitting on the bottom of the pool, you kind of reach down thinking that you're going to grab that ball and um, you realize it's further down than what it appears to be when you look at it from above the pool. The other thing is the reverse is possible. So if, um, if the fish is actually looking at the eye, the fish would see the reverse and the 
per the eye or the person would be appear further away um, from the surface. So it's exactly the reverse. Another optical illusion is um, is basically the light refracting in the atmosphere, and so uh, the same thing can happen here. the 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 sun can actually be set but you can still see it in the sky because of this bending of the light. So here's my sun, here's the true position of the sun, but um, when the light hits the atmosphere, it actually tends to bend. And so when the person sees it, they follow the lines back and it is um, higher in the sky. So the, the sun can actually be below the horizon and we can still see it because of refraction.